From the beginnings of organized farming to the advent of organized labor, work has dramatically changed and has fundamentally shifted even more as we move to industrial era into the today's technologically enabled on-demand reality. The, the ability to automate work and use artificial intelligence to augment everyday tasks now here and the nature of change in the workforce ex is accelerating as robots start to, to walk outside factories, to, the weir of drones grows louder in the air, and the driverless cars are poised to join us in the streets and cities nationwide. We're in, we are rapidly approaching an inflection point where the acceleration of these trends will bring out a sea of change in the workforce. Thanks for, this is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Adrian Pedrin. Today, hey. the discussion of today will focus on how to adapt our communities and organizations through innovation to produce a Fort workforce of the future. Specifically, we're going to discuss, you know, what are the, what skills will be relevant in the future. So, Adrian, what do you think? What will work look like in the future? Well, right off the top of my head, it's, I, I think it's going to be like anything related with robots, robotics. Because, I mean, the, the, that's like the future, if you want to go that way. Yeah, uh, well, see, here's the thing. It's going to happen. <laughs> but not right now? Yeah. So so if you... I, I, there's already a McDonald's with... Uh, with yeah, robots. yeah. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, if, I mean, if you if you look at the latest stuff, I mean, you'll see that Japan is moving towards robotics already. Like you are seeing um, a hotel that's, I mean, that has no humans in it. Basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and, I mean like here, that stuff, like that. It's already here. They're playing. I mean, they're playing with the robot taxis. Um, I, I mean, it's so. I mean, it's moving pretty fast. I mean, it, I think it really depends on how fast and how big the investment is. For people to want to, uh, or, or or organizations, or, or or you know, in this case, nations to move to move forward. But um, I mean, if you look at the, I mean, if, if in the mainstream, that's going to take a take a take a while. Um, <laughs> um, and you know, most of the stuff that we see right now is is algorithm algorithm based, um, and I think that's where most of the most of the you know stress from people comes from um you know it's more i think more the question is you know what jobs should we do <laughs> and not the robots <laughs> i was gonna say something creative but yeah i mean it, it, anything i mean humans will will i mean the, the best case scenario is humans do what humans do <laughs> until robots can do it better yeah no no it's it's true because you know it's I, I was reading this um yesterday you know there's a some some guy you know decided to write a program where they can basically upload an image and then have the robot paint that image digitally so basically what's happening is you're training a robot to or or in this case an algorithm to do you know a creative task obviously it's not a it's not an original um you know original work <laughs> but you can see where this is going <laughs> I, I just saw a video I'm, i don't know if it's true i don't know it's a it's a site i follow on facebook i think it's futura futura future something Future. like that futurism uh, something like that i'm not really sure but it was a video that in 2016 or 17 you're gonna be able to buy a, a robot that comes like that is integrated with the kitchen mm -hmm. and someone somewhere is recording chefs cooking everything and doing everything they do to make food magic and that robot is um is recreating it yeah and i i think 2016 or 2017 is it's it's too soon for that kind of things that's why i'm, I'm like is it real or not but and they can they can still like they they're gonna still be recording um, more chefs doing more dishes. They can upload it yeah. and the 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 robot and the the robot can even learn from you if you have prepared something yourself. He can he can learn from you. So I mean that's supposedly a, a year away from now. So I think it's it's. I mean I think we tend to. Um, it's coming faster than than you think. Yeah, it's coming faster than you think, but. 
adoption is 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 a pain in the ass for for anything. That's really when where where fortunes are made. <laughs> um, I th I mean I I think that. I mean, we will see robots. I mean, we're already there. I mean, a lot of people, I think we discussed this in a previous podcast, you know, how people tend to forget that um, we've, been, we've been using robots to, to travel <laughs> for, you know, almost, almost three decades now, you know, and I'm talking about airlines. Um, people don't know this, but a lot of people still don't get it, that, you know, planes fly themselves. You have a human that's acting like a caregiver to a plane, but really the plane is the one who's who's doing all the flying, <laughs> right? And that's just an example of everyday things. Um, so I mean, I think I think I think that you know the pieces to do to go full full on automation are already there, but I think you know there's going to be huge problems when it comes to uh, job displacement and 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 job elimination, <laughs> where this and that's 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 where I want to. You know, focus our discussion really because it's really about you know what skills do people need in a world where you know a lot of things are going to be automated that people now do for example do you need people at a counter when you go to the supermarket mm, no there's there's already self checkouts there's a, them and they've been here for for a while i mean yeah. i don't i don't really know who the hell invented that but um if you go to an office depot or or uh what's the other one's called the uh, the one with the uh, new workshop stuff and stuff like that. I don't remember the name, but I mean, there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I mean, even even fast food. I mean, Ralph has a yeah. Has a check out, a but pe you know, but people still don't use them. I mean, if they use them consistently, I mean, they wouldn't exist. I yeah, it's I mean, weird probably, because probably in Europe, I mean, it's a little more advanced. But here, there's like four or five of those self checkouts, and there's rarely people there. They're, yeah. they're making a huge line at that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. And there's one person always there to take care of stuff because there's always problems with those things. Yeah. You know, there's a... Um, I th did I show you that video? I think I think I... Did. I don't know if it was you or somebody else, but I, I'm sure I, I shared it to some, some people. But basically, there's a, there's, a, there's a restaurant in Japan that all the... I mean, basically, up front, you don't see anybody. Like if you go into the restaurant up front, it's a sushi sushi restaurant. So up front, if you go in, you go, you don't see anybody. You don't see a human. All the humans are in the back, in the in the in the kitchen and stuff like that. Everything else that's going around right around you is automated, including how you get the dishes, how you pay, and all that stuff. <laughs> that's an example, I think, of of you know what's going to happen in a in a in a short medium term, where where. <laughs> Where people are going to be like similar, like to, like the plan example. I mean, they're just going to be caregivers to certain tasks, but not doing all the all of the other tasks. You know what I mean? And that's, I mean, that, obviously that's happening in in places where, you know, a little more forward thinking. But over here, I mean, it's going to take a while. <laughs> I mean, just remember that um, most economies depend on on the service sector, which is most most of the low wage stuff happens, and that's where most of the like the retail stuff. You know the people at the counter. All those people are getting you know low low paying jobs. I mean, yeah. those people are going to get displaced eventually. <laughs> but that's going to create a huge fucking problem. <laughs> and that's why I think for it's a take, lot of people, but for a the, bunch of people, but the the owners are going to be happy because it's going to be cheaper. yeah, absolutely. They're, they're going to be making more money. Uh, well, that and 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 um, a lot of other reasons. But you know, I mean, think about that. I mean, what's going to happen to all those people? Exactly. That's what I, I mean, if, if, cause you know, most of these people don't, I mean, if they went to school, they either didn't finish or didn't give a fuck. <laughs> right. And number two, uh, most of these people are, are, have been habituated to, to jump from one job to another, basically living off a paycheck. Um, and most of these people also have worked at bad jobs. I mean, take, I mean, let's, let's two, two examples here. Starbucks. I don't know how big Starbucks is, um, but I'm 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 pretty certain they have a awareness that most of the people that work for them are low paying and they're probably going to have issues. So what they they've been doing for a while now is created this program where they pay basically people's education, mm -hmm. right? So they're they're they are you know being good towards their employees. I think that's a good thing. 
Yeah. Um, but then there's the other ones, the other companies who don't do anything like that. They basically just, um, they're glad or they're even happy to have turnover in the low paying jobs. It's kind of like a, like a common thing now. Because, um, I mean, for example, go to retail. I think you and I talked about this before. I mean, how many people actually who start in retail actually go up, up the ladder? <laughs> I mean, if you spend 20 years doing that, you probably do. But, I mean, <laughs> right? I only know it's not going to happen in a few years. I only know one guy that, and it, this had to do everything with his charisma. But he started working at a jack-in-the-box. And I think it was so one to two months after he started there from like the lowest uh, job there at a position. I don't know which one it is, but he ended up being manager in about uh, one to two months. Manager. Mm -hmm. First time working at a fast food place or restaurant place or whatever. <laughs> and I think it was six months after he started working there. He was working in corporate. For Jack in the Box. <laughs> well, there's, there is, um, yeah, but, that, that's an anomaly. Yeah. It, I mean, there's going to be anomalies. But. Everyone was like, it, there's like a 1% a of people who end up in corporate from the, from the, the Jack in the Box. But I, it had to do with his charisma, just his charisma. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know. But like you say, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not everyone. I mean, listen, I mean, I think that that you know one one key one thing thing that's that's definitely going to happen in the future or how work's going to be you know be done is is collaborative i'm going to give you i think we talked about this before also but the cto of starbucks and not and not I don't know, by the way i'm not obsessed with starbucks i mean but that's just a, a company that's actually doing stuff <laughs> that's you know forward thinking it gets on your radar that that's why it's on my radar but the cto of starbucks is basically used to be a guild leader remember yeah. we talked about this and in warcraft right so he built up skills that he could use, or a Starbucks said, you know, we can use those skills over here in the real world <laughs> because he's actually done them through a digital medium, right? So they're seeing, okay, the future is going to be digital. We're going digital. So let's bring digital skills and people who actually have those skills, you know, they didn't look at him and say, oh, that's a fucking gamer. No, they just said, what, what are this guy's skills <laughs> in that world that he can bring over here, right? So, so that's important because... My personal experience is that a lot of people do not know how to collaborate digitally. When we talk about you know doing skills that robots can't, well, robots can't collaborate yet, <laughs> yeah. and robots can't brainstorm yet, <laughs> right? Robots can't you know <laughs> inspire people, <laughs> right? And all those things are still the the stuff that happens within you know you and I and all the other rest of the humans around us, right? So. <laughs> You know, in, in a world that's going to be more collaborative, um, we're going to be creating more stuff with people we don't really know. <laughs> the only, the only sector I think it's not going to be affected by all this is uh, it's the creative sector. Well, the creative sector is not going to be affected because number one, and this is this is like another topic, but whatever. Um, it, it's pe it's pe it's it's a it's um it's going against the grain you know creat creativity is going against yeah. the grain right non status quo and the reason for creativity is because somebody's well not the reason but one good reason for for being creative on on fire is because you're pissed off at something and you don't like that so you, you feel you, something you want to do something about that emotions yeah and and whereas you know most tasks are not creative. <laughs> They're just, um, you know, checklist. Yeah. <laughs> you know, put off the checklist. Get it off the checklist, right? Steps. So, and that's most of the stuff that goes, you know, to robots that we want to, you know, eventually um, delegate to robots. And that creates, a, you know, again, that creates a big, a big problem because most people are not creative. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, people are creative, but you got to get them out of, get them out of their box. And that, and that's yeah. the problem. You, that's, yeah. the, that's what takes time. That's what takes a lot of effort. Yeah. Number one, from them. And also, if, if you know, from, because I mean, it's it's it's, you know, everybody hears about Google, but most people will never work at Google. Why? It's very simple. It's they... very simple because Google does not accept, you know, normal people. <laughs> it's the truth. 
They even say it, right? I mean, it's the truth. I mean, it's the truth. But I mean, right now everyone's used to working. The, I mean, not, not even used to working. They have the mentality of, oh, I need to, like, the same thing we were talking about the other day. They need to go to school and get a job and work and buy a house and blah, 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 blah. That's, yeah. That doesn't make you creative at all. No. So it makes you stupid. <laughs> you, you still have to, like, change the whole... It makes you into a robot. Yeah. And I, I, I also believe that in the future, resumes will not be relevant. Yeah. Precisely because that. of what we're talking about. I think it's going to be more that you're going to make noise and people are going to... If you have the skills you. to pull something off, and that's how it works right now. I mean, if, if, if you get make yourself known because you did, ex, do, did something useful or whatever exciting yada 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 i mean you will get noticed i mean it's easier to get noticed today than it was you know years and years ago it's it's insane but not in in, in and usually you don't look at somebody's resume <laughs> you look at, his, at, his, at their digital footprint right yeah you know it's it, you know like in my case i don't if if somebody wants to you know hire me or whatever i created my my own i don't want to say resume but it's kind of like my my digital footprint here it is <laughs> this is me <laughs> right if you didn't check it out by the way here it is <laughs> but because i i expect you to check it out right because now you know you put jorge barba in google i'm the first guy that pops up even though i'm not the, the only jorge barba right but i made sure I'm the, i'm the first guy that pops up right <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and that's that's and that's i think that's another you know component of the future of work you know most people should have their digital footprint You know, all people, not most people, all people should have one. <laughs> And I'm not talking about a, a website created in Wix.com. <laughs> I'm talking about something that's, you know, is that your best representation? Uh, <laughs> some website on, a, you know, of a template? I mean, really? Hey, Wix is a really good site. I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I like the templates. It makes every, out of all the template sites, it's the best one. <laughs> I don't really like it. I mean, I mean it's useful for... I mean, I used to be for to do prototyping, yeah, but that's about it. Not to to do the actual stuff. So if you need a web page, you actually pay someone to make a web page. Yeah, but uh, I'll do that one as a prototype tool. But um, and that's and that also, by the way, that's another another skill that I think is important in the future. Which one? Uh, the ability to pre pre people to prototype. Yeah. Why? Most people don't know how to pitch themselves, pitch anything. Yeah. And that, and that, and the other thing is, most people are scared to even do so anything. And prototyping is a very safe way to, uh, you know, to say, hey, this is what it is, you know, get some feedback, experiment, you know, do get more better. stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not something that's, you know, taught anywhere. <laughs> like you were saying, I mean, people go to school to get the right answers or to regurgitate the supposed right answers. And that usually takes out whatever experimentation there is off, you know, to the, to the curve. I mean, that's, that's what it is. But, um. What 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 skills need? What skills will we actually need then? What more skills? I think it's just gonna be either creative or technological. Those yeah. Are the only two, two so things. so so look like, like another question. Will people? I mean, because there's there's a huge discussion going on right now about people learning to code. Yeah. Right. Um, I think two weeks ago when we were sitting down, you were showing me some application that you have to make games. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. That for me is like a like a like a pattern. It's not even surprising. I mean, obviously, it's not you're not gonna make uh, you know uh, Metal Gear Solid with that, <laughs> right? Not yet. But yeah, but you <laughs> but you can make a very very you know you know like a Tetris or something, something like that. You know, a first person thing. No, you, you could do a, 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 a an Angry Birds game with that. Yeah, those type of games. Like yeah, more cartoony. You could even make like really good games. I mean. It's, I'm not even gonna say the name of the software, but if you dig a little online, you're gonna find it. But this guy's the the creator has a, a few top uh, iTunes store games that he created with the engine, and there's they're nothing compared to what you think they are. Yeah, because he, he he's using the engine in a different way, but he's selling it to everyone as you can do. You know what? You can do all these things you, that you already know. Mm -hmm. But only the creative people are going to be able to to, to, to see. Okay, it. I have this. To understand what it. can I do with it? Because there's a lot of tutorials of, on how to fake certain behaviors that you can't make uh, with the with 
the presets. Yeah. But I mean the the if you want like a health bar for an enemy, you can. There's no way to do it. You have to fake it, and there's a lot of tutorials on how you can fake it. But it's, it's people who know how you can use the engine and yeah. how you can use all that stuff. And these guys right now, they're about to launch the, the second version of the software, which is going to be, like, way better. And um, I can't wait to check it out. Cool. Well, I mean, going back to the point is that, you know, the tools, I mean, people need will need to, well, people need to, to code in the future. I think it's going to be like math. Maybe. I think you need to know at least some something. Because I, I foresee us programming our own robots at some point. I mean, seriously, do we want to outsource the programming to somebody else? <laughs> I mean, we've seen a lot of science fiction films where yeah. that goes r really bad. Really I know, nice. I know. <laughs> but seriously, do you want to outsource? I, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people. Let's I mean, say, you got to trust somebody, but... <laughs> let's say there's a there's a new robot and it's a servant robot. And he gets you water, he gets you whatever. And I, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to mess with the code that one they're gonna start doing like a uh, little code snippets that you can download and insert to your butler for him to i don't know do certain things that they don't let you do or <clears throat> but i mean that that's gonna be like the, the technological crowd they're still gonna be i mean it, i think it's like the iphone people and the android people and the android people yeah i think it's gonna be something like that and I, there's always going to be, like, the consumer and the guy who maybe consumes but still wants to create. Yeah. And like we said before, it's, it's if you make noise, if, if there's a, a guy who's creating some really cool code snippets for a, the servant butler, he's eventually going to get hired by someone. You know what? This guy's very popular online. Everyone downloads their, his code snippets. And he's a, apparently he's a good programmer, so let's give him a job. It's going to be like that. I think it's going to be like that. It, I mean, I think that's at the beginning. <laughs> at the beginning. But, um, I mean, the other thing about the coding is, and you were you know, going back to another comment, is, you know, people have a, have a digital footprint. Do you think coding is, well, you, you just said it, it should be like math, right? It should be taught in school. It, sh it should like, be, yeah. I mean, it, it should be, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, super advanced coding, but, you know, Kind of like the, like the basics, yeah, yeah like, the, the like fundamentals. Two, like two plus two is four. I mean, yeah, you know what I mean, it, the stuff you need on a daily basis because yeah. this stuff is going to be surrounding us eventually. Eventually, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about machine learning or you know artificial intelligence. You know, not that. I'm just talking about the, the basic stuff. I mean, mo one know, or two years. You know, HTML five is 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 here. It's not even that complicated to learn. I mean, and that's just like the web web. Web languages, I mean, and people interact with the web all the time. I think that's also another issue because um, most of the stuff that, that you can do online, you know, and in, in going back to the point about the digital footprint, we can all do them. <laughs> I mean, I've programmed my, my own website. It's self-hosted, right? And, you know, if I need help on something, it's very, very specific, very, very advanced, like, oh, like an API thing or something like that. You know what I mean? But but most of the stuff, I mean, just to present yourself, I mean, we can all, anybody can learn that. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of stuff is lacking. Um, you know, a lot, another skill for me is, um, you know, so I mentioned the ability to collaborate with people, the, the you know, the knowledge of digital. <laughs> um, and, th and this is ridiculous. I mean, we haven't talked about that. Uh, but here in Mexico, you know, and we're talking about big companies. They, they, they don't. I mean, the the latest guys coming out of the university, and I mean, they don't know shit. <laughs> yeah. Really, I mean, they don't know anything about digital. It's ridiculous. They've never set up a website before in their lives. I don't, I don't know what they go to school for. <laughs> you know what I mean? And these guys are the ones who are behind us. I mean, they were born with this stuff. We 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 were born into it. <laughs> yeah. We were born with video games. These guys were born with the internet and, and cell phones and you know smartphones, all these things. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So what the hell are they going to school for? <laughs> but anyway, um, other skills I think is um, so let's let's uh, you know I think uh, what was it like four four months four or five months ago I gave a talk called the the portrait of the future leader and I mentioned like kind of like the you know five things that that you know 
will tell you this exact feature layer. And I kind of framed it as one component. Or one or one component was framed as, as one single, you know, kind of like a single name. So a hybrid thinker. So basically a hybrid thinker is a technologist, a humanist, and a capitalist. Alright? So what I in 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 you know, a hybrid thinker is basically a generalist. So somebody who knows a lot, but is not a specialist. All right? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think specialization is gonna you know gonna remain. A lot of people like to be specialists, but I think more, you know, towards you know to foresee to foresee things, we need people with a with a generalist capability. And I consider myself a generalist. So it's, it's it's not it's not for me it's very normal to detect who's who's a who's a, gen, a generalist around me, um, but I think that's very important. You know, bringing the component of technology. Do you understand technology? And I'm not saying just uh, you know sending emojis through Facebook, <laughs> you know, or sending animated gifs. That's not who cares. I mean, really. <laughs> the other one is the capitalist. I mean, do you know how to make money? <laughs> do you know at least a little bit about how finance works? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying be an accountant <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or anything like that. Just, you know, basic understanding of, you know, can you start something <laughs> and have a discussion about that? And the other one is being a humanist. So basically, yes, computers will be, will be around us and robots, but, you know, can you still be a human and understand other people, relate to them? I mean, how are you supposed to lead anybody? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I think those, those things are important. Now, on top of that, I would add the skill of, of, of sense making. Sense making is making sense of what's around you, making sense of connecting the dots, basically. Okay. Right? Um, which is what we do in this podcast. <laughs> right? Well, that's what we're trying to do, at least. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. I'm going to say well, that's what we do. <laughs> but we're trying to do that, right? To connect the dots. Um, so, how do you do that? Well, number one, <laughs> You gotta be very fucking curious. <laughs> yeah. Right? And that's the that's the other thing that's lacking in the world. People are not fucking curious. They are not curious. <laughs> and it's going back to they are taught that they need to grow up, go to school, get a job, and get a house and get a family. Yeah. And, and I mean, those are like instructions. You you if you follow them, you're gonna live a good supposedly, life. So supposedly. <laughs> why be curious? Why why question the things you're supposed to do? Yeah. Did Did you ever? Oh no, you didn't go to it. But I, I, I mean, you know this. I have a workshop called the Innovators DNA. Yeah. Which I based off a book of some that these guys created. But I basically, I, you know, I, I had to interview them once, like two years ago, at my my blog, and I asked them if I could use their, basically their information as a as a as a as a workshop, right? So I created a workshop off their information because I understood it. I thought I could I could do it myself. They said, yeah, go for it. So I did that. I created a workshop called the Innovators DNA. Basically, this, I added one skill to this whole thing. So they came up with five. I came up with another one. And I think those are the skills. You know, on top of all, everything we're talking about, you grab these skills onto anybody. <laughs> and you put them, you, you insert them into their, because everybody always has it. But we need to develop them. So basically, number one is going back to curiosity. It's association. The ability to, 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 to associate stuff that doesn't make sense. That's how you create. That's how you make creativity. That's how, that's how comedy works. <laughs> and that's how, you know, interesting stuff that we, we do works, right? Anything that we find shocking, interesting, is usually a combination of stuff that doesn't make sense. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the truth. The other one is questioning, right? The ability to ask provocative questions, not just stupid questions, but... You know, you know, if you ask a question about just, you know, anything, well, <laughs> I mean, there's questions and questions, but what, the type of questions that I'm asking about is the ones that you can understand something and then break it down, right? I always tell my daughter, you need to question everything. Always question everything. Yeah. And she goes like, why? And I'm like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> That's what yeah. you do, right? <laughs> yeah. Questioning, observation. Can you go outside and observe, observe things around you? Can you make sense of them? I mean, pay attention. Basically, it's paying attention, right? If something, can you detect anomalies? We sometimes get like um, tunnel, vision, tunnel on, vision on a lot of things. Because sometimes when my wife drives and I'm on the passenger seat, 
I try and look out the window and try and analyze the houses I've seen for like 20 something years. Yeah. Every day as I go by and I try to look at them, like really look at them. Like I've seen this house a thousand times and I hadn't noticed that there's something back there or that it's bigger than I thought it was or stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's we see it every day, but we don't you, see you, it. You don't see it. Yeah. And you need to be able to do that. Yeah. So, so one example I usually give, give, give people when you know, doing the workshop specifically on observation is, you know, go out and um, pick something a day, right? Pick something. Let's say you start, you know, using it. Um, say you want to detect stuff that's green, <laughs> right? And make a note of all the stuff that you notice is green, right? And you will, you will literally end up with a, notes of it, right? And you will instantly become more curious about the stuff because you never pay attention to it. And do that for a week for different things. You might even be like... And you will start noticing a pattern in there. <laughs> Why right? is all this stuff green? Yeah. What you know, makes it green? Yeah. You know, another example is that I have people do this. And, this, and, and the reason this observation is important because it shifts your perspective. So another example is, in, in, this is for people who like drawing. Usually you're taught to draw stuff as you see them, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so imagine that you're going to draw me. And it's easy because we're accustomed to seeing people you know, head to toe or, you know, the same type of face, right? Um, but in this case, what I tell people to do is draw somebody, you know, flipped. Upside down? Upside down. So draw my face upside down, yeah. What's going to happen? Usually people go blank, right? It's like a shock to the system. And that's, 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 that's what you got to do. That's how you start noticing stuff because you got to pay more attention, <laughs> right? So, so there you go. But another skill is networking. We touched upon this on the collaborative stuff. Can you network with people? Can you? Well, not it's not networking with people. Um, you know, like people uh, like going to conference and stuff like that. And what I'm talking about is networking with people for information, for insight, to 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 do shit, <laughs> not to 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 exchange business cards. <laughs> All right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's. I mean, those are damn important. To get anything done, you have to work with others. The other, the other skill is, is um, experimentation. So where, without experimentation, there is no innovation. That's the bottom line. So I usually ask people, how many experiments have you done? They're like, what? What's an experiment? Exactly. You're not, gonna, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> That's your first try and your only try? Doesn't mean anything. Try more. Try more shit. <laughs> That's how it works. And the last one, the last skill that I've added myself is the one visualization. Basically, can you draw? And I'm not saying be, a, be an artist. Just like prototyping, draw something. <laughs> uh, a sketch, right? <laughs> With squares and whatnot. You know, anybody can do like a, like a flow chart. Do something like that. You don't have to be an artist to, to draw. But I think those, those six skills are basic. We all have them, by the way. It's not just Steve Jobs or, you know, <laughs> famous people. It's all of us. But like, like Adrian was saying, I mean, once you go to school and, you know, it seems like, like every, every grade you go up, all those things go away. And more dogma is placed in your head. <laughs> yeah. Just follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Just follow the yellow brick road. Do something close your damn it. eyes and close your damn ears and just, yeah. and close, oh, by the way, close your damn mouth too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, how do we, where and how can these skills be learned? Creativity. Yeah, everything we talk about. Not in because school. we're not gonna get them in school. Yeah, not in school. Well, non-traditional schools. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but I mean, if you're talking about non-traditional schools, I think it's still a long way yeah, before it's, we it's still get... a long way, but... There's only one in Tijuana that I know of, and yeah. it, uh, it's doing okay, but I mean, I really like that. I, mean, I like it, how they're doing everything, but I don't know if they're going to implement all the things you said. No. I mean, like, in my case, I, I went to a Montessori school when, okay. when I was, you know, eeny mean. <laughs> So this stuff for me was implanted in my brain at a very young age, right? Yeah, That's yeah. how you're taught. You're taught to play around. You're taught to fuck around with stuff. Yeah. Play mess, with mess it up and, and stuff like that, right? That's how yeah. that, 
And, and you know, I think a month, months and months ago, I found my mom. I found something in my mom's house where she had my my old stuff in there because I went to pick some stuff, and she had my uh, like my scorecard from Montessori. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit! Well, listen, she said, what's what's the scorecard? What are the rating for? And I saw that, and I was like, oh man! So you know, it is true. All this stuff about playing with others and and messing around, you know, all this stuff is rated on there. Oh really? Yeah, it is there. <laughs> it was there when I when I used to go there over twenty years ago, but um, or half of the you know almost three decades ago. But but that's I mean Montessori is is like I mean the question I always place to people in, in education is how do you put Montessori capability at the university level, at the you know. I mean, but a lot of people tell, think that Montessori is a, a kindergarten thing. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's not. You know? It's not. A lot of people see it like that. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. And you gotta be all serious when you're in college. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing is, you know, the question I get all the time is, okay, so if our employers responsible for people's skill development, I'm like, well, they've been... They've, they've been responsible for that for a long time but tell me if that's if anything has changed <laughs> because it's, it's supposedly the responsibility should be the schools but like you, you and i were saying that's that's bullshit <laughs> this reminds me or gets me thinking about survival of the fittest i don't think i think if we teach that at schools all of that at schools i think it's like the easy way to do it But right now, I think that only people who want the glory or who want the victory need to work for it. And it's only going to set you apart if it's hard for you to find that knowledge, but you still find it and you still learn it. And for yeah. example, I, I want to learn Italian. And if I can do that on my own, I deserve to learn Italian, you know, but I'm not going to be like, oh, there's no schools near me. Yeah. I can teach no. Italian or learn it. I don't have any money, blah, 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 blah. There's, I think there's always a way to do, to, to get what you want. Sometimes it's hard, but going back, that survival of the fittest. It's not about killing other people and being the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, survival of the fittest goes to, for example, when I, when I decided to make a movie and quit my job and all that stuff, that's, That's not a like a sane thing to do, no. and there's still a possibility that I can fail and end up like being oh you know what I'm gonna start working on another thing because I failed at this I don't think it's gonna happen because I'm a resilient motherfucker but um that for me is a survival of the fittest that like you keep it I mean the odds are against you but you keep going and you keep going and you keep and you find a way and you find a way even if it's hard you find a way and then. You deserve whatever you get. So I think it's kind of like a test for everyone. If they don't... I mean, it's kind of not their fault because they're not being implemented that. But if you're truly curious, I think you're going to find a way to, to learn what you want to learn. Yeah. And excel at something or be on top of everyone else and not be a uh, barista coffee place or working at a retail seasonal or stuff like that yep. i mean that's that's your fault if you're there and you don't like it it's your fault if you're there and you do like it hey awesome you're happy that's what counts but if not it's your fault yeah i mean it's it's really simple i mean it, it's it's about continuous learning <laughs> right learning doesn't start doesn't start and end at school and, and sure doesn't you know start and you know end at the job that you're doing i mean it's ridiculous But I agree with you that people should be accountable for their own learning. I mean, really. <laughs> it, otherwise, it's ridiculous. Um, and I, you know, I was I would ask the next question was how can we how can the skill gap be bridged? So I think we kind of answer that, yeah. right? Because you know, there's a lot of um, resources on. I mean, the internet is a is a re repository of knowledge, the biggest one we have, and you know. It's really a, any type of knowledge is really a click away. It's up to you to find it, right? Um, to this, you know, to discuss it, to 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 take something, and say, oh shit, look, what can I do with this knowledge, right? Or even, or more importantly, develop your own knowledge, and that's where experimentation comes in. Um, you know, can you take something and say, oh shit, you know, it's never this never this this path never been explored. Let's go let's go fuck around with it, 
right? Yeah. Let's see what we learn. Then you'll be the first one to discover new knowledge, <laughs> right? Because nobody's ever told you. There's no precedent for that. You know what? What people told me when I first told them that I was going to make a movie and it was going to be like this, this, because they told me that. What's it about? No, oh, it's like this, 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 but I'm trying this out because normally when they make a film, they do this, 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 but I want to use that knowledge, but flip it on people so I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And some producers, film producers in, in L.A. actually told me stuff like this. It was like, well, if someone hasn't done it yet, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe they haven't done it because it doesn't work or they did it and it didn't work. And when they told me that, I was like, is that supposed to like stop me from trying it? Yeah. Like, but that was the mentality. Shit? That was the mentality of maybe it doesn't work. If, uh, I don't care. I'm going to do it. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to po post it online and tell everyone. This, hey, this don't, don't go me. this way. Yeah. Let, if you try it, let me know what you do anything else different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm like, no. <laughs> when, I, when I, because if for me, a nice breaker with someone that has like something in common with you, it's always like, So what can you tell me about this, this, this? Yeah. But when I'm when I'm asking that, I'm also like going in my head, I could just Google this and not bother this person. Yeah. <laughs> I mean everything going back to what you said, everything is on Google. If you want to find anything, just Google it. You're not the first one with that problem, you're not gonna be the last one. Yeah. You know, so it you know, I think last yeah, last year. Last year, yeah, a year ago. I was um well and I've been doing this for a while, but people didn't know this. Um, so I've used Google Hangouts for for do, doing all sorts of things. Like, for example, digital an, an anthropology. I'm seeing <laughs> digital ethnography. I've used it to um, to do mass brainstorms. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, going after systemic problems like the future of banking. You know, stuff like that. So when people heard about this and that I was doing these things, they were like, like, oh shit! And they came up with all these reasons why it didn't work. So Since I've been, been have been testing these things be beforehand, I, I I showed them a list and I said all the stuff you're mentioning, I've already done it, <laughs> right? And I remember one time we were doing one, and people were worried that oh the connection's not gonna work, whatever, da 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, it probably can't work because it's not it's, it's it's really dependent on on Google's connection or somebody else's connection, right? So if you like you for example, if you're in Roma, in Rome, right? I'm not in control of your connection over there. So if you have a connection problem, well, that's your fucking problem, right? Yeah. Hence, you will be off the call, <laughs> right? And people will worry about that. Like, what happens if we log off? So we had that, we had that issue it's because something just, somebody couldn't connect some, for some damn reason, right? So that stuff out of control. But I, then I said, listen, if the other guy says, oh, no, I'm pissed off because it didn't work, da, 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 I don't want to do this anymore. I said, we don't fucking need that guy. <laughs> For that reason, because he's not willing to, to give, it, give it a shot, right? So I said, let's try it again, right? Let's give it a few days, and then we'll try it again. We tried it again, and it worked, fucking worked perfectly. Everybody's like, oh, man, it worked, right? It was like smooth sailing, right? <laughs> and I said, there you go, right? It's technology, dude. <laughs> What are you going to do? We can't control everything. But, I mean, we can postpone, we can try again, period. But that's how you figure shit out, right? And I think that's the attitude that's needed also, I mean... We don't want people who at the first thing, the first sign of trouble, they're gonna, you know, gonna, you know, go off running. I mean, we need people who will figure it out, try stuff, and you know, obviously, I've had a lot since I've had a lot of experience with this stuff, experimenting with it. People have come to me to ask me like how to do stuff with Google Hangouts, <laughs> that you know, the the non traditional stuff that's usually you see on the web about you know interviews and whatnot, but actually doing work with it, right? Yeah. Because I've done this stuff before. I mean, and it's and it's very simple. I mean, but it took me, you know, it took me quite, you know, more than a few, more than a few tries to, to figure, you know, what worked and what doesn't. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's related to what we're talking about. Um, so, so another thing that's going on in, in the future, the future of, um, you know, the, the workshop for the future is, um, so self-employment. So a lot of people are becoming entrepreneurs right now, which I don't consider them entrepreneurs. I consider them freelancers, Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, contract workers. So we are looking at like the gig economy, like, like Uber drivers who are just basically on a gig, but they're not working for, Google, for Uber. Basically, they're contractors, <laughs> even though Uber says they're not. But let me frankly, they are. But the point is that 
we will see, I think we will see this more and more as we go on. I, I, I certainly believe that a lot of us, and, I, in, in, and in my case, I'm already doing this for a while, is that I'd rather be on a contract, contract worker, than be an employee. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, and this is like a, like a huge, huge, um, like kind of has a lot of tension into it. Because there's benefits to being an employee. There's benefits to being an, a, a business owner and having employees. But there's huge benefits in not, ha- in not having employees. <laughs> right? Like, like Uber, Uber does, right? So, will self-employed, like free agent contract workers, be the workers of the future? Maybe. Why? What needs to happen for it to, to remain the same or the, for... The first thing I was thinking when you were saying this is that if everyone's freelance, then no one is. Then no one is, yeah. Well, I mean, what's going to happen if, if, if there's like... If everybody's an entrepreneur, nobody is. Yeah. You know if, I mean? <laughs> if, if one person needs a logo for their business and let's say, let, let's go into a... This person lives in one block, right? It has 10 houses. So you, if everyone's uh, a freelancer, how many of those people in those ten houses are gonna be freelancers? And let's say someone needs a logo, he's gonna have like thousands and thousands of places where he can get a guy and and he can make him the logo. But how are the other ones gonna survive? That's that's what I was thinking. If if everyone does a logo offers to do a logo and you only need one and you have five people well it's it's similar like like uh, elance and uh upwork and all these things yeah, where you the, post a job and you get like like a gazillion entries exactly so are all those people making a lot of money or no. not so much so how are they surviving how it's, will they yeah. survive and that's that's a you know have you ever heard of a mechanical turk no amazon's mechanical turk Okay, so it's basically like little gigs for for cents or even dollars. And you do those, like, l- l- literally really stupid stuff. Like, uh, let's look for an article about that, that, that. <laughs> or 10 articles about this. And, and people will do this stuff, right? Um, <laughs> and and this, is, this has become normal. But, but really, I mean, this is what people are doing. <laughs> it's non-creative stuff. It's non-creative stuff. Even like, uh, like TaskRabbit. It's kind of kind of like mechanical Turk, but for other stuff like um, go uh, and uh, you know stand in line for me for whatever and yeah. you know for fifteen bucks or whatever. You know what I mean? People would do this. They'll go in there and stand in line. Oh, the iPhone's coming out. Let's go and stand in line. I'll fucking pay you like five hundred bucks, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? You know stuff like that. But uh, you can go to to any type of task and you know put it into that system, and people will pay for it, <laughs> right? Oh, that's crazy. Well, that's crazy, exactly. But for what? And that's also a, a reality, but you know that's not creative work. That's that's you know, you know any any type of whatever. <laughs> that's filling the gap. That yeah. The robots leave. Yeah. When they take your job. <laughs> yeah. But if you if we if we go to a you know to a creative work um, approach, I think that the contract approach is going to be like what I what I use. And I like to use the, the analogy of a, a, a movie production company because it's literally what it is. <laughs> you pick your team for a certain project, you put a timeline on that, and then you do it, you execute it, and then bye-bye. The actors will never be the same. <laughs> Maybe a, a few of them because yeah. you like working with each other. Your, 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 your skills complement each other. But kind of like that. you don't need those skills. Sometimes you don't need them, or... bam, right? Bam, and then you, you disperse. And I think that's gonna that's that's gonna happen. It's not it's not a it's not something's common, and I know because I've been doing this for three years now. Um, it's not common, so people are kind of confused. Like, like I'm saying, listen, Mike, uh, we have yes, we have a an account that we use to do these types of projects, but it's not a company. <laughs> the way it works is none of us are in payroll, right? We just like working with each other. So when there's a challenge that's like like a similar challenge like this. We bring in the team, bam, 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 we come in and we hit it like a SEAL team. It's for a few months and then we're off, right? <laughs> if you need us again, let us know, bam, right? Yeah. <laughs> but 
but it's very specialized, very, very specific. And I think that's certainly going to happen, <laughs> or it is happening already. I know more than, more than a few people that work that way <laughs> for very specific stuff, but it's very hard to get people or, or companies to, you know, to, to, to accept that because it's like, what? <laughs> Are you guys new to each other? Holy shit, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they think everybody should know each other. You, you got to go and knock on the door and say, oh, I need your services. Well, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's like on demand, right? Yeah. And I think that's going to, that's definitely going to be the case in terms of contract workers and stuff like that. If you go to a, a, a higher level, not the, the one we were talking about, like task rabbit and stuff like that. But I think that's, that's definitely a feature we got to, we have to embrace. I mean, and it goes back to you know, the first point about the, the guy from the CTO from Starbucks, you know, does he, is he, he's a guild leader. Well, I think we need guild leaders in the real world now. <laughs> Yeah, we can bring teams together and stuff like that. But so, I think that's it. What do you think? It's an interesting topic, but um, I'm thinking we're gonna come back to it once we start seeing more. Yeah, I mean we we've um, we kind of talked about it previous podcast like the the reputation one. Yeah, we touched upon it, um, and and. Uh, but guys, if you haven't heard that one, you know, go back and hear, listen to it. It's very, very, uh, you know, associated with this topic because, you know, taking the, the, the concept of the digital footprint, um, how will we, we'll probably be rated in the future, right? For yeah. stuff that we do, <laughs> yeah. um, it's going to happen. It's already happening. So if whatever we're saying right now, you know, ends up becoming something that's, that's actually, uh, it actually happens, and you know that's pr that's very very common. It's very 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 um, safe to assume that the other thing's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, safe to assume. But um, you got anything else to add? Nope. All right, so we'll leave it at that. All right, guys. So thanks for thanks for listening to a podcast. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, remember to uh, to follow us on Twitter at Jorge Barba and at Adrian Pedrin. Send us any questions you might have. Let us know what you think about this topic. You know, what skills will be relevant in the future. And uh, see you next week. <laughs>